Hello and welcome to the, let's see here, uh, 28th edition of the Dojo Kun Shill Shack. My guest co-host this week, returning a second time, is Smiling Bandito. How are you doing, sir? Fantastic. Hail, Ooh. hail and well met. How are we That's doing a tonight? great answer. I love to hear fantastic. Yeah, that means that we're going to have high energy and uh, lots to talk about. So. <laughs> That's right. Bow. <laughs> we have we have a couple of great guests here to talk about their projects, and uh, we're going to start off by bringing into the panel Mr. Sean Errett. How you doing, Sean? Hey, Al, thank you for having me. How are you guys doing tonight? Yeah, we're doing great. I can't wait to talk about your pre-launch sign-up page mm -hmm. and talk about the project that that will launch soon. I, soon. I believe. Soon yep, soon. yep, we're getting soon there. Well, we'll talk about the date when we get into that, sure. Yes, and then also, too, let's bring up our guest, uh, Nick Gibson from hey, see, oh. this right, the Phoenix, the, the Phoenix, Phoenix Press. Press. There we are. Yep. And uh, we'll be talking about his campaign, which is not in pre launch sign up. In fact, he's already in demand. So we'll see oh, if nice. we can get a few more backers for him. Um, and correct me if I'm wrong, Nick, but this is uh, book two of your project, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, I'm chugging along here and I cannot be more happy. That's great because, you know, when, when you see a project is into its second, third, fourth volume, but, you know, second volume means that you're in this for the long haul. And like you said, still plugging along. So that's good to hear. Sean, we're going to start with you, though. I've got your sure. campaign ready to share. Okay. Well, it's, sorry, it's not a campaign. It's a mailing list. <laughs> mailing list. Yeah, just <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Right. Clever. So, Very clever. Uh -huh. Well, the coach is the one who you know, sort of guides us along. In fact, I did a clip of uh, a show last week's show when John Hervey talked about the guidance that the coach provided him. So that'll be hitting the, the, the short form videos pretty soon on my channel. So it's, it's great because coach is uh, a guest star and doesn't even know it. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to go to the type one and mm -hmm. You can, uh, you know, steer me through it. I know there's not a lot for us to see right now, but if you'd like, we can do the video first. Yeah, let's, let's rock it out. All right, let's do that. Go taking uh, the main <laughs> stage at the end there, yeah, right? Well, I want uh, people to know. I don't want them to know that it was a Kickstarter, so you know that that uh, that trailer is slick as fuck. I love it. Thanks, yeah, brother. isn't that awesome? Yeah. yeah okay, so two comments about going. the trailer. Yeah. Number one, the yeah. hottest preview book in of last CG. summer. I, 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 I saw that. <laughs> of last summer. Of last oh. summer. Okay. All right. Yeah. That's fair. Yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. I, made, I made that know because. You know, some people are sensitive Sally's, and you know, I don't want to deal with that as a, as a host I myself. I have no idea who you must who you might mean yeah. by that. Yeah, no, but we'll rock with that. But yeah, this is uh, the mailing list for Type One, uh, an action adventure story with some real life input. I don't know some word I don't know. Implications. But yeah, that, that's the word. That, that's what we're rocking today. So I got a great team. I'm doing. I'm writing it, illustrating it. Colors by Dan Kemp, a legendary spawn colorist. I just brought on Eric Weathers to do the lettering, and it's by uh, Mark Poulton. So it's it's a fun book. I, I've already well, where's my stuff? I've already put out two preview books. Well, a variant. Uh, the first one from last summer, called uh, drawn by me, colors by Shelby Robertson, and then I did a variant because I'm all about the scheme and scams, like my co-host John Sontag, back Reaper Destroyer today. Variant cover by Marat Michaels and colors by myself. Which oh, the original? Oh, look at that! You mean these oh, two? Man. Oh, that's my dude. That's my dude. We have a fan on the show. Look at yeah, that. Yeah, and uh, I donated the original art to the Marat Michaels to JDRF Illinois Juvenile Diabetes Research Foundation. 
they oh, have nice. an auction going on this week, so hopefully it raises some money so some kids could get some uh, pay for some medical bills because it's expensive to live as a diabetic, as I know. So, yeah, that, that's so, that. Sean, I don't know if you know, but my uh, the youngest stepson of mine was type one. He yeah. he was diagnosed uh, maybe five six years old, but uh, I didn't meet him. I didn't meet him until he was around nine ish, mm-hmm. and we we blended our families, and it was it was a new way of life. Uh, I, you know, I had to be concerned. I mean, he was only nine. So, you know, he wasn't as concerned with his health as, you know, an adult would be. So we had to right. keep an eye on that. So I know exactly what you're talking about way more than I thought I ever would. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm taking, you know, what I deal with and so many others, but, but bringing the superhero fantastical element to it. I got aspects of mind and Aztec lore. So that's huge. Um, the, the pitch is, Find out what connection the mysterious Type 1 armor has to the nine Lords of Night and how the past can save our future. Thomas the Art, the Heart and Arm become our hero streams, but is it too late to save all mankind? So it's not just about the bees. It's going to be, you know, a fun... I'm not writing Shakespeare, but it's going to be a fun, fun story. <laughs> and I've gotten some great feedback from everybody that's gotten the preview books and in the BD's community. So as far as that goes, I'm winning. You know, and th- th- everything awesome. is just just winning. And uh, yeah, just some, uh, some 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 snippets from the preview book, which was the first fifteen pages right. of uh, okay. the story. Uh, Dan Kemp currently has a handful of these; he's coloring them now. So by the time I launch the book, I'll have enough pages to show because you want people to see more than just one image, you know, on your campaign. You want to sell them on some yes. sequential art as well because that's what Rob Arnold says, and that's what I'm do- going to be doing. Rob is go. correct in this instance. Yes, when yeah. you see the that the art uh, carries the story too, because mm-hmm. the after all, you know, I know you're both the writer and the artist, but uh, even if it was two separate people, the storytellers include both of them. In your instance, you get to um, you get to put your vision directly on the page. I'm a little yeah. jelly about that, but you know, hey, it is what it is. And I'm just taking the, my love of like 80s and 90s uh, comics and uh, cartoons, animation, and just making an amalgam of some fun stuff. I have my, uh, I'm a huge fan of Harry and Hendrickson's, Hendrickson's, I think that's how you pronounce it. So I have characters of some Sasquatch type characters meets oh. Dino Riders. And, oh my gosh. Uh, oh, I haven't seen that movie in forever. Oh, you should check it out. It's, it's good times. Maybe oh, I, I remember liking when I saw it. So. Yeah. But, so it says here, sign up for an opportunity to get a Mike McMahon Prism card. Is that if you sign up and then later back a physical tier? If you sign, yeah, if you sign up and then it'll it'll be through the mailing list, you know, uh-huh. like it'll be like through like one of the secret perks, or if you sign up through there. Uh, okay. I got to figure out how to do that, but yeah, that that's how I'm trying to sell people to get uh how to how to get a uh, buy my stuff, and I'm going to be copying Joe. First hundred people when the book actually launches. We'll be getting a metal print uh, of the cover done by Phoenix. So nice. You know what's what's awesome about that is I, I I was ready. I had my finger on the button. I was ready to back. I was number like thirty four. <laughs> so it's like holy crap. <laughs> you got to be quick around CG. Yeah. Oh, no kidding. Yeah. I mean, yeah, that, that, yeah. Some of that, some of that stuff goes. It's it's like it's like pre ordering a Supreme Brick or whatever. <laughs> mm. Yeah. You was... have your finger on the button. That's right. And I expect the very same thing will happen with yours, Sean. I'm going to be a day one backer. Uh, I can't wait to. Oh, and speaking of which, you said it's soon ish. Let's talk about when is soon ish. So I'm going to be launching in the end of July or early August. Uh, Isaac Bell was like, let's talk so we don't run into each other. I'm like, Isaac, you're going to kill me. Like, you don't need to worry about me. Like, I need to worry about you. But right, it's, right. It's, it's, it's going to be towards the end of July, early August. Uh, okay. Had some setbacks uh, due to some family issues, as we some of us might know. Uh, but, yeah, just trying to get back on track, trying to get as many pages colored by Dan so I'm prepared and have a proper campaign page that everybody is just there. And they're like, oh, okay, this is what I'm going to be getting. And I'm going to back it. So, Everything's right. got to be a struggle, right? It's got to be, man. You know, if, if it yeah. ain't a struggle, it ain't fun. You know, like it ain't a life lesson. <laughs> So. Yeah, the struggle the struggle is half the battle. The Ooh. other part is knowing. There you go. Right. I'll plug in. <laughs> I'll plug in that. G.I. Joe. Yeah. But yeah, this is a blast. It's 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 my passion project. I created the character almost 30 years ago when I was 11. I, I made a sketch and I brought it to Dave Cochran, who for those that don't know, 
Dave Cockrum, it was a famous X-Men artist. He co-created Colossus, uh, Storm, and Nightcrawler. And he thought it was cool. And I realized my character name, Shrees, is kind of dumb. But he thought it was cool, so I'm sticking with it. And uh, uh, yeah, yeah. It, so in other it, words, the guy knows knew what he's talking about. Yeah, yeah. So if Dave says it's nice, uh, said it was nice, so you know, who, who, who am I to uh, go against? Who are you well, against well, the guy who brought X-Men back? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. Number don't one, forget how many stupid how many stupid sounding things end up being incredibly cool uh once yeah. we define what is cool. Like right. you know who I was the frick, say that who the frick the... thought Wolverine would be one of the most iconic character names ever. Yeah, yeah. I was going to say that about the name. Strees meant something to you when you were 11 and yeah. It's different. It, it's not like you're naming him after the armor he's in or something like that. So the name he's got, you know, I think that because it's different, it'll stand out. And that's part of the brand is it'll be recognizable. Mm-hmm. And I think, you know, memorable. Yeah. It's so, like the simple, you see the thing is uh, it's really hard nowadays to come up with like a simple name. That's also catchy. Cause like all of them have kind of been taken. Mm-hmm. Um but like when you can hit upon it, it's really good. You know, the fewer syllables, the better. It was supposed Sometimes. to be straight, but I'm dyslexic and I wrote strees, so that's what <laughs> nice. came out. I I think I think the second one works better, in my opinion. I'll work with that, yeah. And uh, on the left is is my cover, and on the right is my my brother and Aunt John Sontag's uh, Reboot Destroyer Ash Can cover. And we were originally supposed to do like a back to back thing. Uh-huh. But... <laughs> 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 Threw me out of the bus. Love you, Joe. Uh, but rightfully so, Joe. Joe decided that for the ash can, leave it as this, and then do a new one, which he has a double wrap by pencils by him, inks by Matt Bat Banning and Kyle Ritter colors. So it's just kind of cool putting this together. People see this is what A and S is all about. This is the, the summer of art and stuff. That's what we're promoting. The summer of art and stuff. Joe is killing it with Reaper Destroyer. I hope to get a fraction of that. But we're just blessed as as a team. Like we're blessed. For, for art and stuff, for everything that every, everybody's showing love for, for. Tentacle Pentacle. The show can begin. You know, the thing about Tentacle Pentacle, you, you might hear the name of my IP that's coming up, Projectile Reptile, and wonder, was there any kind of uh, impetus there? You know, was it a... Some sort of collusion between... Inspiration. You and, you know, I, I will neither confirm nor deny that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all about spreading rumors, so we can work with that. Okay. <laughs> You got to keep that speculation to drive the engagement. So this, this here, well, you know, I'm going to just throw it out here. You can say that the idea came from this show. Will you do a metal print of this? Well, we, we are talking about doing something. We, we had ideas uh, to do a poster uh, last year. But thankfully, thankfully, we both got so busy working on Reaper Destroyer Type 1 with our ash cans that it had to be put to the side. And I just mocked this up last year on Sunday and people are like, yo, you need to do something. I'm like, I know. So we might do something down the line of maybe a poster, maybe a Chrome poster, maybe a car to print. We don't know. We're once we get our, our bearings settled after the campaigns are launched on both of ours, we'll probably make something, you know, just, just to promote both the both brands and both art and stuff. So, you know, if, if this was a separate tier or maybe two cards that you could put together one on your, oh, you could even do a Reaper Destroyer metal card on your campaign and a, a Strees card on his campaign. That would be pretty cool because then it'd be cross promotion. Oh, I'm going to tell him that. Yeah. Yeah. I need his backers. No, yeah. That, that's a great <laughs> idea. <laughs> that's a great idea. Oh, man. Oh, it looks like, uh, oh, Tentacle Pentacle is giving me kudos for the idea. Great minds think alike, he says. Yes. But if I can just share really quickly. Yeah. That's... We got time. All right. We're here for that's... you. Oh, man. I just want to share that. That oh, Go, 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 go. My, my Cintiq is really slow. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Sorry. Oh, what is this guy? So this is, these were those those characters I was telling you about. Where did my page go? I'm sorry. I'm 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 a boomerang, as the youngins say. So these are my Sasquatch characters. Okay. Uh, this is the Paramus. So if you see the helmet, like that's the Diner Riders aspect, like the brain box where they get controlled by. I'll use the word one of the Lord Nine Lords of Night. Um, they if if you're if you watch uh, Ancient Aliens and all that stuff, like I love I love that show. So I'm taking all the elements of how they disappear. I'm not saying it was aliens. 
But it was aliens. Yeah, 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 yeah. So he's got his staff, a little bit of the Mayan lore on the back <clears throat> for for the dress that everybody keeps telling me that he has and the bulge in his dress. But Ooh. yeah, I know. But he's this, packing. He's packing. Well, you know, they're, they're big dudes, you know, and, and uh, maybe some big girt gals, but. Uh, hey, some of us like the big gals. I'm just saying. If Resident Evil uh, Eight Village has taught us anything, is that big big gals have their place. Yeah, okay. more, more more cushion for the pushing. But this is uh Theranox. The th this character right here is Theranox. He's kind of like a head honcho of the the Paramus that are being controlled. But we'll see other Paramus that are not bad per se. And it's not that they're purposely bad. It's because they're being controlled and captured. So. so they're unwitting antagonists. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, the best of us. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to be seeing a lot of them uh, and more more characters throughout the uh, throughout this series. The first book is just an introduction, just to kind of get to know the world, uh, the setup. Um, also, the main thing is there's an uncle nephew relationship through it. Uh, Thomas DeHart and his nephew Aaron. Uh, the whole. I'm an uncle. I've been an uncle since I was 17. I love my niece and nephew. They get to go home after I spoil them. They're adults now, so you know, <laughs> many years. So that I think was your always been point. on stream before. He was, yeah, yeah. I, I had him pop on for a bit. Uh, that shout was cool. to my nephew John. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so the name Thomas and Aaron is from my friend Aaron, who his uncle Thomas was the guy that got him into the geek lore. And was almost a father figure to him, but he he lost his life due to the complications of type one as well. Oh, okay. So I just wanted to respect him and just show love to my my, my other little brother, uh, just to be like here, you know, just because he was such a great guy, he can somehow live on within the book. And Thomas's mo mother, uh, Aaron's grandmother, absolutely cried when she read the book, the preview book. She's like, "It's my boy." I was like, holy wow. shit. Like, I, I didn't think that would I just wanted they're okay so they won't sue me. But but just <laughs> just just from the family, I was like, wow, that's really, really honored. So you know, it's it it's it's more just a BD story, it's an action adventure. Uh but I'm not I trying to raise Shakespeare. It's a great homage though to the people that you know in, in real life. So yeah, that, that gives it you know an extra oomph to the passion, in my opinion. So I, I appreciate mm. that. Mm, thank you, thank you. Yeah, so that's very cool. Again, we're, we're make, look, we're making great books in CG. We're making fun books in CG. We're getting our books out there. I put out two preview books, so I tell you how to ship a book. And uh, I'm just blessed to be here and be be part of such cool people. You know? That's right. Yeah. Um, one thing I wanted to ask you. Mm -hmm. uh oh. Well, uh -oh. Welcome we, to we... the Smiling Bandito Show. Um, <laughs> it's great to have you guys. Uh, you know, I've happy to be forward. here, Bandito. Happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Been looking forward to this for a while. Not that I planned this uh, with Brian. <laughs> to, uh, to, uh, sure this you did. Black. Had black and white interiors, but I think. <laughs> Am I back? <laughs> there you go. Oh, there you go. Yeah, yeah. And that's the second Bandito time. did a DDoS attack on Dojo Kun confirmed. <laughs> wow. Well, yeah, I don't. For I, I don't remember time. giving him the wrench, but wow, what power he has. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you got to get so out who, there and take it for yourself. You can't just wait for opportunities. I have the power, right, Nick? <laughs> Instead so, of the sword of omens, I'm holding a wrench. There you go, Sean. Who's the guy in the red armor? This is Lord Aramis. He's one of the big baddies that we're going to be uh, introduced into the first volume of Type One. He has an armor itself. Uh, the the armors come from the Mayan, Aztec, Inca lore. So we're gonna we're gonna be deep diving into that aspect of it so it's it's uh th there'll be more armors we're, we're just going to introduce you to a few now we're going to find out his motivations why he's a dick why he's doing <laughs> what he's doing uh some other parts of his life and uh yeah i for you always have to have a cool villain and fortunately i think i have a bunch and with nice. the lot the nine lords of night with the aztecs they they, they they're deities and they have names and and descriptions but with the mayans there's not much known about them it's more about like the nine nine levels of the underworld and it's not considered hell because mayans believe we came from the underworld so you can kind of mix them together put a little fantastical elements onto it and get like a mortal combat type of vibes so we're, we're going to be introduced into one of them uh in the first book and then span out as hopefully the 
the the book grows and and uh, yeah, he kind of gives me some Cyrax vibes. Well, he, yeah, he's just red. I could have made him purple, and you could have been like, "Oh, he's purple," but no, yeah, he's just red. Uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. So I again, I love Captain Powers. That was a huge inspiration, like uh, Spiral Zone, Centurions. So just taking okay. the love of everything and putting everything together to make a, a fun kind of Bionic Six. Like if you like, so, 80, I apologize. I'm really no, excited. You're talking about me. <laughs> <laughs> what I was going to say is, it looks like what you've done is you've you've given yourself enough. Uh, leeway and a lot of characters you can introduce slowly you can introduce them as a group if you like but you've got a lot of area that you can expand which is great yeah so yeah. with the success of the first one or two books you can take it so many different directions yeah 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 and again there's going to be more armors introduced um more characters different type of uh characters i essentially took the best of all these different properties i made as a kid to a young adult and just kind of took the best of them all molded them together and uh when i did that uh back in 2019 i threw a convention down by here down down in delaware me and my uh, my agent and we we teamed up with an animal shelter so if you came you donated some some animal goods foods toys whatever you could get into the show cheaper that went great we we, we handed it over to the shelter and they were dicks and we all know i got an ego we all know i got an ego <laughs> so so okay. when I dropped, they didn't say thank you. And I'm like, what? I'm like, you're welcome. So we went out to lunch and I'm like, all right, it's my show for next year. Let me do something for me because I'm selfish. So we reached out to JDRF Illinois, not Illinois, uh, JDRF Delaware. And we were going to, I was going to do a print for them for the convention. They could take it, sell it, make as much money as they want, you know, yada, yada, yada. Right. Then we got hit by Bud Ice, our, our, our contact left, so that was kind of up in the air. But then I got introduced to uh, JDRF Illinois, and I'm kind of working with them right now, just seeing 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 what we could be doing. Again, I donated the original art to Marat, and uh, yeah, there's going to be a tier in the campaign. Shout out to Rick Sailor, that even if you're not into this book or into comics and you want to get a book for a kid that that has uh, juvenile diabetes or just whatever, you could buy it and it'll be donated to them and JDRF or one of them will decide how to make that happen. So nobody gets mad at me and we can get a book in the hands of kids when they, they have a bad day. They can't get out of bed from having their, their levels too high, too low when it yo-yos it, it's bad. Yeah. So, and, and just the feedback from parents and, and kids that, that got the preview book saying that inspired them. It's got their kids to draw get into creating and like or again i say i win already i won just from that feedback yeah you as did. is so everything else is uh sugar-free icing on the cake <laughs> sugar free <laughs> right so you know uh also too what you could do or what they could do is uh put these in the hands of kids who when they're really low and are so antisocial. oh yeah oh yeah, yeah it's for a sure. perfect time for them to, to to sit down and read and get involved in that and i think it'll help you know, obviously they're going to have their juice or whatever, and then yeah. bring them back up. And so, did you see Tentacle Pentacle's idea here? The CG yes. Super Group, Reaper Destroyer, Type One, Gem Shock, and Pit. Did you? Ja Ro did a did a did a fan art of all of us together about a few weeks ago. Really? And, oh my! It was so. First of all, it's an honor to be included with Gem Shock and Pit. You know, uh, for Bo Joe and I. And we're like, yeah, yeah, like maybe one day something might be down the road. But but just to be considered for somebody to, to spend their hard-earned time to, to, to draw your creation and add it to such established characters, Gem Shock's going to be a hit. Reaper Destroyer is already a hit. Uh, Pit's a classic. So I, 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 I am very, very blessed on the road that both Joey and I are on. And yeah, I have it. I have to agree that that's this is a group where we are all lifting each other up, and yeah, yeah this the standard is getting high, mm -hmm. um, and you know it's a meritocracy. So all of us, whether we're lesser known or big names, really got to bring our air a game. That's um, even the folks who have been doing it for years and years and years have to bring their a game because people just want the quality. Now I think that, like you just said, Pitt is going to be like. Uh, a, a sure six-figure campaign. I mean, I don't think there's any doubt about that. No. I can't wait for the omnibus, which they're you know talking about. But the idea that he's uh, I'm not, by he, I'm saying D.L. Keown for anyone who might not know. I can't imagine 
somebody might not in this group, but you, you never know. Um, so Dale Keown is so down to earth and you know, he'll joke with you. I'll do you a cover, man. <laughs> and I know he's digging, he's digging at Malin a little bit with that, but yeah. um, if ever I could get, uh, you know, a cover by Dale Keown. Wow. Imagine that. Yeah. Yes. As do I. Oh, yeah. First up is that. I gotta yeah. be in the, in the position to afford such a cover. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. 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 Well, he's been handing them out to some people uh, yeah. recently, hasn't he? Well, they gotta um, pay. They still yeah, gotta they, pay. They <laughs> I mean, he's worth the pay. money. It's not. It's not like he's. It's not like you're getting ripped off. He's and I think you'll, you'll make it back. It'll. it'll yeah, exactly. That's what I was just about to say. Yeah, you, that too. You'll get your return on investment for sure. It's just having the money up front is the is the issue. Yeah. Um, but yeah, he's worth it. Um, mm -hmm. So the the cover that you showed us a few minutes ago, Sean, the the one that uh, has the cityscape in the background. Yep, that's North the New Jersey. That's the main. Oh, that's even uh, a real. Uh, yeah. picture of a city okay yeah. that's the main cover do you have variants in mind i do one by somebody that that's come that's a rising star uh what's his name he was in a band i forget uh <laughs> joe joe something oh joe m sontag joe m sontag he's doing a variant for me he's been around I, a bit how'd you get how'd you get a hold of him i don't know you know <laughs> he's in demand uh i, 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 <laughs> right? I had some people like reach out to him. He's it's it's really tough. Like to it's get okay. a hold of that guy, you know. He's busy. His, you caught a star on the way up, so I know. Right. soon, soon yeah. he's going to be unreachable by the rest of us. But uh, I know, I know. Well, well, I, I have some dirt on him, so that works as well. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah, that's always good. You to can't have. be influential. Always have blackmail. Yeah. Oh yeah. I got, <laughs> I got pictures. Uh, there's another creator that I'm going to be reaching out to. That I'm going to see if I can afford him. But he's not CG, but he is one of my yes, Fred Durst, P Pack Destroyer. Uh, oh, I you hope, just keep rolling, rolling, rolling. <laughs> you know how we do it in AS, so <laughs> all right, pop. It, if I could get him to do it, I think it would be awesome because this guy is uh phenomenal, he's a legend, he's one of Joe's and I, huge inspiration, and he's gonna be an art and stuff within the next week or so. So nice, if you watch that, huh. you'll I still gotta see if I can afford him, but you never know. All right, well, I hope you can because that's always yeah, me fun. Too. To bring in even CG adjacent folks to yeah, show them that yeah. we're not the dicks everybody says we are. <laughs> well, it's and, just great to be able to work with talent. Oh, for yeah. sure. And uh, I I have a piece by uh, my other best friend Phil McNulty, Cowboy Phil. If you're not familiar with him, oh, might are you gonna do something that with that piece that was in the back of the, yeah. the preview? Yeah, I'm thinking. I got some ideas, maybe because right, th this is still a business. You don't want you don't want to be losing money, but I think with Phil. And having it colored by Dan Kemp, it'll, it'll fucking rock. So it might be a variant cover as well, or a cover to something else that will be in like the big, big tier. You know, you know when you spend all the money, you're gonna get anything every way. So it will we'll make magic. We'll make magic. Can, can I show it off, or is that? Oh, yeah, uh, for sure. No, yeah, no, okay. yeah, of course. I'll stop this. This. No, no you're not. Too. You're not allowed to show <clears throat> all the things you're excited about. Yeah. So that's by my other best friend oh, Phil nice. McNally. Yeah. Yeah, he's he's really good. And this and this too is reminiscent of 90s uh That's classic. That's 80s uh, and 90s that's stuff. Style. Yeah, this yeah. This uh so Phil? it was based it was based on this Sean that I reached out to Phil to mm -hmm. see if he could do something for me. Yeah. And uh yeah, he's a little out of my price range for the time being. Uh <laughs> we'll, 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 we'll see if we can make something happen. Uh, yeah, uh, you know, I mean, maybe start a GoFundMe. <laughs> there you go, GoFundMe. Help Dojo Kun get the best In artist. Indiegogo, you know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah, but again, Shop I got a great team, a great, great bunch of friends. So yeah, that's, that's very cool. cool. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, yeah that cover looks like it was taken right, like uh, X Men and uh, Silver Surfer had a love child or something. So oh, for sure, that's, Phil that's is great. very Jim Lee. Like he, yeah. he can. I'm not saying ape. But he is a sponge when it comes to artistic talents. Like, and, and and it's not copying, it's not tracing. I've seen him draw shit like on the spot. I'm like, oh my god, you're way too talented, my brother. <laughs> yeah. he, he he knocked it out of the park. He's like, oh, I did something for you. I'm like, all right, what is it? I'm like, oh my god, this is so yeah. awesome. <laughs> right. Yeah. And like Brian's saying, that that '90s style just really pops. That's, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. That's and you know, what, that's what we're 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 all about. Like like for Joe and I for art and stuff. Like we're we're. we're we're, we're kids of the 90s, you know, like uh, oh, I'm totally. from the, the Rob Liefeld message group that people call us the Liefeld kids. Uh, <laughs> tremendous talent that came out of there. Mark Poulton, Mike McMahon, John Malin, Adelso Corona, Tommy the comic guy, 
Anthony Z, uh, who colors Graveyard Shift. Uh, just a lot of cats. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so it's cool to be coming from from that group as well. And here we are spreading our wings like 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 STDs, you know. So, <laughs> well, and that style too. I mean, like, there's definitely you can see some Art Berry influence and that kind of stuff there. That's, oh yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Good point. Yeah, um, I hadn't thought about that, but now that you said well, it, you're and, right. And when you look at the stuff that we have now, uh, and you compare it to most of that. Um, art from back then, um, Artie Bear actually had more influence on on the current artists than I think any of them would like to take um, admit to. But oh, uh, yeah, yeah. And when you look around, I mean, the artwork that we see now, uh, we've learned nothing since the nineties. It's uh, <laughs> it's it, like all development on comic book art just ended yeah. at nine, not at, not, at uh, December thirty first, nineteen ninety nine. That's it. So that was a fun year. That's uh, that's a Dreamcast. Really good, I got, really my, good, I got uh, my piece of work. Thank oh, you, thank you, thank you. Yeah, you now have my respect. Well, I don't play video <laughs> games. It's just there for. I'm too lazy to plug it in. You know, so. But you own a Dreamcast, so that's worth your respect. All right, I'll rock with. I appreciate that. But yeah, <laughs> I, I think, I'm just trying to make a fun, fun comic for not just people dealing with diabetes, but just everybody that's a comic book fan. Yeah, yeah I'm not trying to write Shakespeare. I'm not trying to tell you I'm a brilliant writer. I just want you to be entertained from your hard-earned money. And so far, people dig in. I'm very appreciative of that. I mean, honestly, yeah. I feel like the best writing comes from a place of passion and, and wanting to tell the good story. And I just by listening to you talk about it, I can kind of tell that you have that. So, Thank like, you. I feel like your story is, is going to be better because you really care about the story. I mean, who, who cares if it's Shakespeare? All that sure. matters is, is if you had fun writing it and you told a good story, and I think people are going to uh, pick up on it. I mean, your success bears that anyway. Thank you, what? Brother. It's not Shakespeare? I'm out. <laughs> <laughs> right. oh, so yeah. No, uh, it's uh, the truth. Out, out, mean, damn spot. <laughs> you uh, Get out. You, you got to <laughs> consider that the people who are backing us, uh, who are putting their money in, that's every dollar that they put in is time that they put into their shit job mm -hmm. uh, that they are now giving you. Yep. Uh, so you got to Very generous that. of them. Yeah, and they're looking to be entertained. Like that's really what their money is going towards. It's not trying to be like, "Hey, I really want this person to have the most spectacular lifestyle." Um, they're just saying, "Entertain me," and uh, you know, here we are sure. now. Entertain us. Yeah, exactly. Right. And so, so yeah, because the they believe in us. Like it's yeah. it, it's like from doing conventions to commissions to my regular job to doing this. It's 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 such an honor that people believe in you and spend their hard earned money. You know, for 100%. something you created like 30 years ago and this and that. So, I mean, so, honestly, seeing people like put it my, my comics, put a smile on people's faces, that makes it all worth it, in my opinion. Sure. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I totally. Yeah, you're right. I loved it when I saw people opening Siamese, uh, you know, early last year. That was that was the first time I got to see people with like unboxings and on their YouTube channels and all that. <laughs> I had been publishing since 2014 and mm -hmm. people were buying them over the, over the web, but I never actually saw people receive them. I know they got them. Otherwise I would have heard about it, but it must've been <laughs> a great feeling when like they open the box go, Ooh, wow. This looks really yeah, cool. Oh, look at what such good feeling. Dojo threw this in there and oh, it was heavy. A challenge coin. Yeah. I, was yeah. Like, I, 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 I didn't buy this, but thank you. Like, yeah, I, I still, I, <laughs> I got I got it in my in my rack of books right there. Like I love it. Yeah, yeah. It's part of my Excellent. Collection. Glad to hear it. Yeah, Glad yeah, to hear man. it. So uh Sean, we'd like you to stick around, but we're gonna pivot mm -hmm. now and take a look at uh Nick's project. Uh let me Ooh, let me go. let me see here. Um <laughs> let's hear about it, Nick. I gotta go to add to stream. Stop that one. A little clunky here, but I'm getting there. It's, it's okay. It's okay. Good things okay. come to those who wait, I always say. There you if go. it's the worst thing that happens, we're doing okay today. Truth, truth. Okay, so uh, nice. Nick, I've I've got it on my screen. I, now I can't see you guys now because I've got just your campaign on the screen. But if you want, you know, sort of walk us through the campaign and then make sure that we cover your tears real quick too. All right. So this is my comic turn samurai. As Dojo Kun said earlier, it's on issue two. So Turn Samurai is a uh, cyber, is like a samurai cyberpunk tale. You got your main character Kiro. You know, he's in this uh, this village, kind of like on a Japanese island, shrouded by mist. And they've kind of been guarding this ancient structure. And one day, it just kind of lights up. And a portal's there. So they send their two best samurais, Hiro, Earthbringer, the Songor Samurai of Earth, and Mishu, Windbringer, the Songor Samurai of Wind. 
you know, they're, they're fian, they're kind of, you know, they're a couple fiancés and whatnot, you know, not the most accurate portrayal, but you know, kind of a fantasy take. And so they go through the portal and they end up in the cyberpunk future of 2100 in, in uh, Neo Detroit. Oh nice. my gosh. So 2100 samurai isn't a number of people. <laughs> it's, it's a year. <laughs> yeah, I, I get that all the time. Uh, trust me, you're not the first person. So, so gotcha. yeah, it's, 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 it's the, notion, the notion of the year. And um, as far as like my influences for this project, I was kind of influenced by like Blade Runner, Ghost in the Shell, nice. Batman Beyond. I was trying to go for like a mashup of like manga and, uh, you know, Western comics and whatnot. So it is presented in like a black and white form. And I was trying to go for like nice. a bit of a manga aesthetic. And then... Uh, you know, some stuff happens in issue one, and then Mishi kind of goes missing for reasons you'd have to read the first issue to do, you know, read and find out. And so uh, Kiro is kind of left, left kind of on his own in this in this city that he's all alone in, and he kind of runs to this woman named Tyler Shini, who you know she kind of helps him, kind of a guide. They kind of turn out to be kind of like a yin yang kind of situation where mm-hmm. you know Kiro he can kill city men, you know, versus Tyler she's more street smart, you know, whereas. Hero, you know, he can't really navigate the social currents that well, so they end up kind of needing needing each other, and then they become kind of partners. So now, what for made the you first... decide on Neo Detroit of all cities? Um, well, I'm I'm a Michigan native. I've actually I actually live 40 minutes from Detroit, and I kind of wanted to showcase more Michigan based comic, and by based I mean like have the characters set in like Michigan areas because like you know you get your stuff in New York, maybe some stuff in Chicago. I wanted to put more characters in Detroit or Michigan, Ann Arbor, you know, because, like, it's an area I know, it's an area I'm familiar with, and I kind of wanted to put a little bit more flavor into things. All right. Well, I'll be That's watching closely because I, too, am from Michigan. Nope. <laughs> Got to represent your hometown. I was I was oh, yeah. born in Detroit. There you go. Oh, yeah. You're still with us. You're a survivor. <laughs> so that cover is uh, pretty special. It was done by a gentleman named Arvell Jones. Uh, you might be familiar with him because he did All Star Squadron. He's also the co-creator of the character Missy Knight. Where if you uh, watch really? the page on Netflix, you'll saw her. Oh wow! Oh yeah, no Very kidding. Cool. That's a great cover. Great gesture. Great, yeah, great composition. Yeah, he did a re- he did yeah, he did a really great job. I, I I see him a lot in the convention circuit. We kind of struck up a bit of a bit of a friendship, so he did this cover for me, and he knocked Very out nice. the park like like seriously. Very cool. So for those of us that. There's a bit of oh, a yeah. Kurosawa feel to some of this too, um, like just the black and white. Um, yeah, I'll definitely say that that is an influence on it. I'd say it's kind of you know going for a kind of a Kurosawa kind of feel to it. Not just the samurai stuff, but yeah, like the style of it. So it's, mm-hmm. Yeah, as yeah. far as the action, I like a good kind of kinetic kind of feel to it. Like, uh, like for example, Matrix is also another big influence. Like you kind of you know, like you know how in the Matrix you see like the after mages of like the characters, you know, the agents kind of doing it. Like, mm-hmm. you see it kind of in the comic when they're fighting, like, you know, multiple shots per panel. I mean, that was kind of a Scott McDaniel thing. Like, Scott McDaniel did it on, like, his Nightwing run. Yeah. Yeah, I'm a big fan. Of, I'm actually a big fan of Scott McDaniel. That's my are. favorite superhero. Um, you kind of see more Scott McDaniel influences kind of in the future with something else I'm cooking up. But that's nice. a little bit of spoilers. Um, okay. So, for that, those of us who want to back the book, why don't you uh, walk us through the tiers, too? So the feature tier I have is the altogether tier, which is for $50. That's up here. Um, okay. Yeah. And and with that one, you get physical copies of both issues one and two. And then, by the way, all these are shipped in Gemini mailers, by the way, just kind of clarifying. Okay. Um, and then you also get trading card sets for set one and two, because like when I did issue one, I did a three-card set. And then uh, for this one, I'm doing a, a set of three cards, plus you'll get a mystery bonus card. So seven cards in total. As okay. well as digital copies of both issues one and two. Nice. That all one's me- basically all metal print. All metal print trading uh, cards. No, just standard trading cards. You know, cardboard and whatnot. I'm, uh, I, I'm fancy, but not that fancy. <laughs> <laughs> so I see there's ten remaining. How many uh, total did this perk have? Uh, if I remember correctly, about twenty twenty five. So about ten people have, have gotten it so far. I'm, okay. I'm honestly nice. very blessed. Nice. That's awesome. Congratulations. That's great. Yeah, fifty dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got a lot of support for for this campaign, and I'm really grateful. How many really? pages is this book? It's uh, twenty four pages. Twenty four yeah. pages. Okay, so I'm I'm looking for. So let's see here. Uh, the double digital. Let's let's see what that one is. Okay, so it's both the digitals for for four dollars. That's that's pretty damn good. For mature mm-hmm. audiences only, man. You just like 
disqualified me from being able to battle. <laughs> you only <really> both, yeah. <laughs> well, it's it's mature as in age, not necessarily personality. So oh, as long as you're chronologically, as long as you're, as long as you're above in. eighteen, it doesn't matter if you have the brain of a twelve-year-old. That it's 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 more physical than mental. <laughs> okay, a high lot five, of us are pretty high mental. Five. <laughs> oh, uh, I'm I'm in good company then. Yeah, we are. So the real deal, uh, for $10, you get both digitals and issue two physical. For a 24, okay, this this is a great price point. Um, that's a very good value right there, I have to say. You're, By the way, great I just want to say, you can, uh, with, the real, with the, almost all these tiers, you can add on issue one for an additional $5. Oh, okay. Nice. All right, cool. Ketchup tier or ketchup add-on, that's great. Mm -hmm. trading card frenzy yeah because like i, I realized yeah because issue one was was kind of you know it, it i it, like it, i it kind of got foobarred a little bit so didn't get out to as many people as i wanted to and i realized this will be a lot of people's first time seeing turn samurai so i wanted to make a put an extra effort to make sure people can get the first issue along with the second one so they can they can catch up and know what's going on smart yeah are you saying 200 sam what what are you saying that th it? this is a I realize this is a lot of people's first time seeing Turn Samurai. It sounds like you're saying Turn Samurai. Is that what you're saying? I, it's probably the way I'm saying it, a mumbling or whatever. I'm trying to oh, say. Oh, okay. I'm saying it like I'm, I'm rushing through the 2100 part. Like I'm saying 2100 Samurai. You know, like gotcha. I'm, like, <laughs> okay. I, it's, it's, it's 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 a me problem, not a you problem. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Just gotta catch I thought up maybe the these Brian. these old ears were like betraying me or something. No, <laughs> I can be a mouth sometimes, so your hearing's fine. <laughs> All right, no, all you're, right. you're just excited about your product, and as you should be, you should be that, like that too. Read my book; it's the best book you're ever going to get. You're going to spend all your hard <laughs> money, and I'm going to give you the best comic. There's well, that's words. true, but I don't want to badger people. You know, there's yeah. too many words. There's too many words to say about it, so you just got to skip a few. That's all it is. Yeah, that's what it is. It's abbreviation, yeah, pretty much. Yeah, I, I learned my pitching from uh, from Rob Liefeld, so I think that's how I'm always excited about everything. So <laughs> no wonder you're so successful. You learn from the best. There you that's go. That's my dude. So uh, let's go on with the tiers. So we've got the trading card frenzy at fifteen dollars. Both yeah, digitals. Yeah, that gives you set two. Sorry. That gives you set two and issue two. Oh, yep. Okay. What is let's get holographic? Ooh. So that one is I'm gonna have I have two versions of this, and you'll kind of see it, you know, the, with the next tier to where I'm gonna spot foil like the titles, the the, the portions that are red are gonna be spot foiled red. Nice. Let's go nice. back up and see where the. Oh, okay, nice. Oh, that's that'll cool. pop. Yeah. Oh my. So goodness. even even his armor. Not the armor, just like okay. the, the the samurai, the phoenix press. That uh, I should note that the cover has since been kind of redesigned a little bit. Um, so okay. that's kind of an older version. But like the type, like the twenty one hundred, the samurai, like the bird, the phoenix press, and then like kind of the stuff down below, and then like the April twenty second. You know, uh, th those portions will be spot foiled red. So um, gee. Sweet. I don't know. Very nice. I don't know if uh, how far you are into the process of that, but if you can get that armor to be red foil too, that would, oh, that would be sick. That would. Not I'm, I'm, crazy. Unfortunately, I'm, I'm currently in print. Like it's oh, it's, okay. our, it's it's um, literally being printed no by Comics Wellspring right now. So, um, okay, you know, I considered doing the armor, but like, I, like there's like they told me I'd lose a lot of the shading, and I'd, of course, I, I feared it would look that. gaudy. I feared it oh. would look kind of gaudy or whatnot. Maybe. So yeah, okay. I, I kind of erred on the side of caution, really. Oh, yeah, yeah. You have to make well, a decision. You don't want to mess up the art. It's up. Yeah, yeah, maybe you made the right one. Yeah, yeah, especially when Arvel did such a good job. I really don't want to mess up his skills. I get you. No worries. Yep. So backer a go go. What is this one? That is um uh, could you zoom in a little bit? Uh, it's I'm <laughs> I'm trying to remember what I put in there. Um <laughs> So yeah, that's the one where you get uh oh oh crap. So that's the one because I have a special edition where it's gonna say like the backer edition on it, and it's gonna be uh oh there's only gonna be twenty five of them where they're gonna be hand numbered. So it's gonna say like on the cover something of twenty five, and then I'll write in like one, two, three, uh -huh. four, five, and they'll come in signed by me. Those will also be holographic, oh. you know. So you actually get a little more spot foiling on them because what I did is um. What you know, it's kind of like an oval. It says backer edition, which is like red, and then the the the, the I stroked it in red, so like you get a little more foiling, 
and then and kind of off to the side will be a square with more foiling on it. The 25 is going to be foiled. So you get more of that, and it's gonna, and once those are done, I'm never going to reprint the backer edition again. Hollow foil, I probably will at some point, but if you want like a very limited edition one, this mm-hmm. is your chance. I nice. see. Okay. Nice. Great. That's a good idea. Hmm. And and who is this? This is is this the fiance you were talking about? Uh that that is Tyler. That's the oh, this is partner. Tyler. Tyler Schnee, right? Hey. Mm-hmm. Street urchin. Got to have a little eight a t. Always <laughs> every day, bow. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So yeah, I had I had I had more more tears, but like I I once I went to print, I couldn't really fulfill them anymore. Like you know, getting drawn in the book. You know, oh right. Name in it like. Yeah. I, once I went to print, I, I physically could like I, I kept those up for as long as possible, but like once I went to print, I physically couldn't fulfill them anymore. So I got right. rid of the tears because it's just it's it's just right. That's that's very um that's commonplace when somebody goes to in demand. Usually those kinds of tears do get dropped off and it's just in demand is just the tears that are like the Yeah, I try to keep them open for as long as possible, you know, because okay. like, you know, because like one of the like three hundred and fifty dollars get drawn to the look. It's like on the off two chance that maybe someone did it, you know. <laughs> Right. So what was the original goal on this campaign? It was a thousand dollars. A thousand. All right. So you've exceeded it. That's why you're in demand now. Mm-hmm. You've got uh, 49 backers thus far. That's pretty good. Congratulations. a thousand dollars. Yeah, that's great. Oh, I see. Yeah, you're in Belleville. I know where that's at. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All right, cool. So um, how long do you think you'll be in in demand? Uh, I haven't really decided yet. Um, probably going to probably wait until the cycle is over, you know, cause like a- 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 eventually I'll probably just end up selling it on my gum road, the physical copies and okay. then digital will be going to global comics and then Amazon. I'll probably go to global comics first because I like them and they deserve kind of like the little bit of, little bit of digital time exclusivity cause they treated me right. And then I'll put it on Amazon and then like later on, probably by December, like once kind of issue two run its course, I'll put it on Webtoon. It's kind of the cycle I like to do. Like let let everyone kind of get the who wants it first, and then once it's done, it's run its course. I'll put it on webtoon. It's great to hear you say that uh, Global Comics treats you right. I, I've never dealt with Global Comics, but it's always good to hear uh, a positive inf- an endorsement for companies out there because we always hear all of the you know the the nightmare stories and the things that happen. You know, with I mean, I've heard great things about Mixum, and I've heard terrible things about Mixum. So far, I'm in the great column because the 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 uh, ash can I had ordered called Meanwhile, some of those came back damaged and they corrected that right away, like immediately for me. And nice. then the, the hard covers and the soft covers of the main book, Siamese, came in. And they were all in perfect condition. I, I, you know, I looked through a lot of them and they were great. So, you know, for, for my experience, Mixum is still a great company to work with. Yeah, my, my go to printer is Comics Wellspring. That's uh, okay. they're in an outfit in Plymouth. Like they've, all, they've always treated me right. They do great quality. Plus, with they're, them being twenty minutes away, I don't have to worry about shipping. Oh, there so you they're go. Lo- okay. They're local. I didn't know that. Maybe I'm going to contact them then. Yeah, they're in Plymouth, uh, Plymouth, Michigan. Okay, that that gives them some uh, some kudos in my mind because yeah, like I've you dealt said, with the other printer I've dealt with, uh, Digital Print Universe. Um, they were fine. <clears throat> like I didn't really have an issue with them. The quality was <clears throat> decent. You know, it's just Comics Wellspring is. The better deal like they i could call them up you know co- you know like they had great customer service local it just made more sense to go comics wellspring in my opinion i've used it in the past for my uh, con artist sketchbooks a few years ago and they, they do they give a great product too oh that's good to yeah, hear I, I love them so much they're, they're great people mm-hmm. i'm quite a bit more than 20 minutes away but they're still somewhat local to me so yeah i'm up i'm up in the thumb and for those of you who don't know, if you hold up your left hand <laughs> <laughs> and face the, the back of your hand towards you, that's Michigan. I refuse to participate in this. <laughs> well, we won't What's know if happening? you do. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, uh, yeah, I'm about 40, mi- 40 minutes uh, east of Detroit and then 20 minutes west of Ann Arbor. So that kind of gives okay. you a little bit of a triangulation oh, nice. there. Nice. All right, cool. Down by the college town. Have you ever met Jersey Drozd? Or know of him? He, he's uh, no. he, he's uh, he, he's uh, more of more of a, a children's illustrator. Uh, he he's kind of started uh, kids reads comics movement. Uh, you might see them out in the convention scene. I, I, I mean, I might have walked past his booth. Like I yeah. do, I do a lot of the local conventions. Like uh, 
uh, Grand uh, Great Lakes Comic Con. I, I do a lot. Monroe Pop Fest. Mm-hmm. I, I do. I do a lot of those. Um, you know, I've done a couple others in the area. You know, so I've probably seen them there. Nice. So Nick, so you're aware in November the Blue Water Convention is occurring. I think it's November 11th or something, and you can uh, sign up for a table early and get a great discount. So you may want to look. How much that. is it per table? Oh, that part I don't know yet. I haven't. I haven't yet. Where is it at? It's in uh, the Port Huron Sarnia area. Okay. Um, is it a one day or a two day? I think it's a two day. Okay. Yeah, because that might be a little bit too far for me. Because like. Um, anything over an hour, I'd have to get a hotel room for, and that adds a lot of expense to it. So it's of like, course, I, I yeah. think I kind of tend to avoid it. If it was a one day con, I'd drive three, four hours. That's, that's no, really no big deal. But like, uh-huh. like that, like for example, the guy who did uh, capital city comic con, you know, great guy. He wanted me to do uh, his convention. Like I saw him at uh, great lakes, you know, but it just, his was a three day con. I'd have to get a hotel room and it's just, you know, a lot of, like a lot of added expense. And I just, yeah. Like I've been Unfair. selling a lot of stuff. I've been selling a lot of stuff at cons. Like at Great Lakes Comic Con, I sold seventy five comics. You know, really good. Oh, that is good. It's awesome. Yeah, it's a you lot know, of like books. It, yeah. It's it's just um even, even like I've been making three four hundred dollars. But like if I go you know Great Lakes Comic Con, it would probably cost me four hundred dollars just to set up the table with the hotel room. So it's like mm-hmm. I'm yeah. not sure if you know even though it's a three day, it, like I can maybe make five hundred dollars, but it's barely making any more. It's like. It's just well, I, I don't think I'm ready. Welcome yet, to I'm welcome thinking. to being an indie creator. <laughs> I was going to yeah. say you've got to weigh the cost, the, the you know the um, the cost benefit, yeah, and um, or the revenue cost benefit, and but you also got to keep in mind that you're getting your comics out there, so there's some value to that too. Although you can't, yeah, if I could afford it, back. I would do my, I would do Motor City in a heartbeat because like I'm not that far from Novi. I can make the trick every trip every day to Novi uh-huh. for, for for Motor City like that. That those they're like two three hundred dollars for a table, but like that's the big one. So it's like I could probably justify that. Yeah, Comic Cons are a bit of a mixed bag, but um, I think there's also a huge missed opportunity with uh, what people end up doing with comic Comic Cons. And uh, we consider the foot traffic that mm-hmm. comes in front of us to be mm-hmm. the greatest benefit. Also, I mean, the networking and that kind of stuff, obviously. Is yeah, great. I treat them as but, like a sales and networking opportunity. But really, you should be considering that we are not just a physical um, promoting promotional uh, group anymore. We are an online group. And there's a lot of content that you could be making at every single Comic-Con um in order to promote your own book so whether that's doing a little interviews every five minutes or i'm sorry every um if you did a little interview with some cosplayer that came by every hour and just five minute interview and you posted that up on twitter that creates content on twitter that cosplayers will be looking for because we're in the middle of cosplay season so you, Hmm. you know you put that cause hashtag cosplay whatever you have something that somebody else is already interested in right and so now they've you got an automatic yes from a potential viewer on twitter because you're already giving them something that they already want to see so if yeah because like i could just collect footage throughout the weekend and just kind of edit it all together into like a, also that. a wrap a wrap mm-hmm. up video you know like yeah. um if i if i had a faster editor i could day do like a day one or two but i think probably for me because, like, I actually have a decent cell phone now, so I can record decent footage. There you go. You know. Um, Lots so of like, different ones. Yeah, and, mm. then, and I could do that and kind of edit it together, and bam, YouTube video. And yep. get the cosplayers' names, because then what you can do is you can tag them in what you post, and then their followers will have, have a look at what you've got. The other thing Yeah, that, I, think, um, I think next time I do a con, I'm doing a con in July, I'll probably do that. The other thing that uh, I think a lot of people don't uh, consider is the um what's it called uh well basically it's about trying to build that email list and Mm -hmm. uh so what you do is you put out a little sign up uh raffle where if they sign up then for i don't know you're doing a five issue super exclusive run i don't know something hardcover or you have stuffed animals or you have special trading cards or something and you do a raffle for those items as long as they just give your email. So now you already have um, a you have a bunch of people that are considering being interested in your stuff. They've already brought their money to buy other stuff there. Like they're not there because of you. 
right? Like they're there because of their celebrities or they're there because oh, right. of, yep. of something. Yeah, right? <clears throat> like they're there because of other reasons. And you're asking them to, on the spot, put out extra money for something that they were not planning for. And so, what do you mean if, by like the extra money? I'm, I'm like, so like, uh, if your book is uh, 15 bucks or 10 bucks at, at the table, you're asking them to come to the expo and spend an extra 10 bucks that they did not plan for at home. They weren't thinking, oh, I'm going to go there and buy Nick's book because they don't know who Nick is. They don't mm -hmm. know Nick until they're in front of your table, right? So okay. they plan they plan to spend 200 on, you know, maybe a Dale Keown piece or <laughs> yeah. you know, a, a Larry Elmore piece or something like or that. Or they're there to then, see Bruce Campbell or whatever right, celebrity is. There. Right, yeah. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so now they're in front of your table. They weren't expecting to be in front of your table. And they are, you're asking them to put out extra money on the spot. It's good to have something else there that they can sign up for. Gives them, you get their email number and they've already given you one yes because they've said, here's my email. Ah, uh, yes, I'm familiar with that sales technique. <laughs> so now, yeah, yeah. so now to, you have a very, and especially if um, you have something that um, you're raffling off that they're already interested in. Let's say you have um, a Stanley autographed Spider-Man print or something like that. <laughs> so now you already have, um, brought their interest in based on something that they're interested in. And so when you send out at the end of the con, you send out an email saying, hey, these five people were the winners for X raffle. Um, and also just want to make sure you guys know about this opportunity to check out my Indiegogo. And mm. these are the opportunities that we're missing at these cons. Um, and it's a bit of, a, otherwise it's a bit of a mixed bag where if you go there and you need to make $400 to cover your table and tra travel expenses. Um, you might not get that at the con itself, but if you can get an extra 150 emails, that could be an extra 50 sales because they are already a group that has um, interacted with you at least once. So if you can get someone who's interacting What's with What's the you best once, way to get these emails? Do I have them write in, the, write in like a notebook or is like their digital um, thing to make it? Make a sign-up sheet. To just well, make a, make a, make a sheet that... You don't want them to write their own stuff because people have atrocious handwriting. So oh, that's why it might it might be best if you got like an iPad that you can uh, get them just to type it in on, and then that enters them into the raffle. Um, like the, I was thinking, the, I was thinking about maybe like printing up some cards with like a QR code with with like a link to the sign up. Yeah, there's yeah, lots of ways. So I mean, whatever way, just don't have them write it down because you know you're going to get a thousand yeah, things that look yeah. like ours. And uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, I'm, yeah. I'm, 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 I, I'm not one to judge because like my handwriting is, yeah, me bad. too. I'm, uh, it's brutal, but um, I mean, we're all 12 year olds, right? So, but uh, <laughs> right, right, 12 year olds and 30 year old bodies, but yeah, so the expos, it is a bit of a mixed bag, it is hard to uh, get that 400 bucks just to cover your expenses and your table and all that kind of stuff. Um, mm -hmm. but that's why you want to maximize your time that's there. So it's not just about mm -hmm. selling the product, which I think is, and you know, there's a selling the product uh, networking, but then there's also getting those emails. And I've had people, um, I've helped a lot of people at expos and some of them have come away with like three, four, 500 um, signatures or uh, emails. And, um, and then of those usually about um, 25 to 40% of them, end up turning over into additional contacts. Hail Rick Sailor. Great <laughs> Hail story. Rick Sailor. Yeah. But Hail uh, Rick you Sailor. Get higher, you get a higher return on their involvement because you've already made at least one connection. It's, then you make a second connection when you send them the email. Um, and then it's easy to get them to click through. So and then so there's the emails and then there is um, the content that you can make for your online um, because that one person that you connect with suddenly becomes 200 people that you connect with on Twitter, right? right? Because yeah. they, if you interview somebody five minutes, you interview one person who's got some black widow cosplay and you post that up online, that one person suddenly now has turned into, you know, 10 times the amount of people, 20 times, 100 times, if they're, you know, super smoking hot or something like that. And um, you do that 20 times throughout the weekend, right? That's 2,000 mm -hmm. people that you're reaching. 
that makes the time worthwhile yeah you bet Mm -hmm. yeah i I need to invest in like a a mobile like filming setup like i got the phone i need to look at like getting like a microphone the phone is perfect the the phone the phone will work like i'm just worried about audio like audio for a con because it'd be pretty bad yeah yeah i can hear what you're saying yeah but but people understand too Mm -hmm. that you're in a room full of you know thousands of fans so and who knows, be you a, might be the next cosplay channel to go viral or something crazy. Like, you never know right? where those extra so, things you're doing. So as far as the YouTube stuff, um, based off of what you're saying, I think what I could do is, you know, like, let's say I interview these people for five minutes, and then I post those individually kind of at the end of the day, and mm-hmm. then I can pile that all into, like, a wrap-up thing so I can kind of, like, get more from my money. I think use it a hundred times. Way, like, you know, because... Oh, well, my mentor, like the one of the things my mentor who kind of introduced me to comics, what he said to me is something I never forgot is, if you can sell someone sell sell a comic once, cool. If you can sell it two times, that's even better. If you can sell it three times, you're awesome. You know, like, well, I mean, it's not I'm, about it's not about you selling it one, two, or three times. It's about you selling it to somebody who then wants to also sell what you're selling. Exactly. Right. Exactly. So yeah, yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad I came on things. tonight. I'm getting a lot of wisdom here. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, so. Smiling Bandito is the man. He knows his stuff. I, I, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just another nerd on the internet. It's all. Well, we we oh, appreciate we you being here. Before we go, before I ask you guys about your socials, before we go, I wanted to take a minute to uh, share this out. We talked about this at the beginning of the stream. I've got a pre-launch sign-up phase uh, page, just like uh, Sean does. He's a little bit further along than I am, but I'd really like to uh, play the trailer for you guys and let me know what you think now that I've got these guys uh, live on the panel. Tell me what you think about this. Fantastic. Oh. Infamous gunslinger Desmond Gibbons, better known across the Wild West as the Cactus Kid, comes to the sleepy town of Clarkson. Trouble finds him in the unlikeliest of sources, the Sheriff. After their conflict, the Cactus Kid finds himself inexplicably wearing the badge of a lawman. Later, while on the trail of a serial killer, he and his deputy run afoul of a powerful druid, and the events that lead to the Cactus Kid's transformation into the hulking, four-armed projectile reptile are even more than the druid bargained for. From the Wild West to current day Los Angeles, where he meets superheroes Black Eagle and Red Hawk, and forms an uneasy alliance with the stunning but deadly Kitty Hawk. Join the projectile reptile on a journey of gunslinging druidic magic, superheroes, and artifacts. Projectile Reptile from Dojo Kun Comics, only on Indiegogo. Are you ready for the truly Wild West? I am so ready. It's awesome. Sold. You know that? <laughs> million dollars. Million dollars for you. Million dollars. Yeah, Appreciate that. Awesome. Yeah, bring the million. Netflix. I'm ready. <laughs> Here's your Netflix Netflix option. Here's your Netflix option. Here's your Disney Plus option. Here's all the options. When are you looking to drop that? Um, well, I was going to say late July, early August, but I got to be careful because a couple guys <laughs> I know are going to be doing Yeah, typically they're coming pretty stacked. Yeah, uh, so uh, maybe maybe I'll look at mid-August or so. Okay. Yeah, I want to I make sure that I get some signups on there, too. I don't want to yeah. watch it too early before I get people like Smiling Bambito was just saying, you need to get some uh, that initial yes before you get the their backing. So yeah. um, I want to make sure I get a good a good number of signups on that pre-launch page. No, so, yeah, yeah, everybody get out there and sign up. I'm sorry, what? I was just saying it really hits. It really pops. That's mm-hmm. Oh, thank you. It looks like classic uh, superhero storytelling. It's going great to be designs, a lot of genres. Great designs. Yeah, I like how you're mixing like the Wild West with like the, the updated superhero, like putting like, yeah, that, that's fucking awesome. I'm, I love what you do anyway. So <laughs> if, Will, if Will Smith is with, I hope Will Smith shows up. Oh, if I could get Will Smith involved, I, I'm down for that. Well, I, don't care. I was like, why? It's got like a little wild, wild west going on. I know, I know, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, yeah. I don't care who he hits. <laughs> Bring him on. <laughs> like, hit those numbers. Me, please tell me in the third act, your characters are going to fight a giant mechanical spider. Yeah, that was supposed to be in the the Kevin Smith sp- uh, Superman. I know movie. that's what yeah. I was. Oh, referencing. Okay, okay, all right, that's cool, the joke cool. I was referencing. All right, cool. Oh, cool. okay. Well, All right, well, he's kind of been running his star into the ground, so you might be doing him some charity by bringing him on. Keep my wife's name out of your dang mouth. Right, right. <laughs> So, guys, before we wrap, I want to make sure that I, first of all, express my appreciation for all of you being here. Really yeah. love that you're a part of the show. Um, and what I'd like to do is go round robin and ask each of you to tell us where we can find you on the socials. And we will start with you, Smiling Bandito. 
Well, uh, I'm Smiling Bandito or Michael Sherwood, wherever social media reaches. And uh, yeah, we're going to be getting back into my own channel here uh, pretty quick. Um, work got me insanely busy um, over the last year. Uh, I run my own business and such. But uh, the looks like I'm getting that tied away. Everything is going to be running itself. And so now oh, we get great. to devote ourselves, devote ourselves to uh, making comics and entertainment and producing some really good stuff. So you can find me on my own channel, which is just Smiling Bandito. Like I said, everywhere that social media reaches. So um, Twitter, uh, Instagram, all that kind of stuff, Smiling Bandito. Excellent. Nice. Thank nice. you, sir. Sean, where can we find you? Yeah, uh, Wednesdays and Fridays on Art and Stuff with my co-host, Joe M. Sontag, Back Reaper Destroyer. Uh, Tuesdays on Joe's channel, we do appreciating comic book art. And on Thursdays, I'm going to be doing starting shows, uh, appreciating animation and cartoons and stuff like that. Like, so we're going to be kicking that off, uh, for the next few weeks, just kind of got some stuff I got to work around, Gargoyles. but yeah, oh, I'll be working on, uh, do I got a story about gargoyles, but, uh, uh, oh, yeah. tuning in then. Uh, Sean Aaron, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, and just sign up for type one mailing list. And thanks for having me on, Brian. I really appreciate it. Yeah, you bet. It's it's always great to talk to you, Sean. I've been around uh, for art and stuff right from the very beginning. From Joe Street, hey, yeah. Hey, listen, when you get into your streams on Thursdays, I know you yeah. also said in addition to animation, you're also going to be talking about some toys. Well, yeah. I've got some that I can bring on that uh, – I think we'll be very nostalgic for you. So let you know, hit me up and time. Yes, we'll sir. talk. Yep. Yes, it's like two bros uh, getting ready for a play date. I'll, I'll bring those. <laughs> I know, know, right? I got my, my toys and my juicy juice. You know, my <laughs> hey, I'll bring cooler. back the coolers. Oh, there we go. There oh, King's <laughs> yummy Coke. King's <laughs> yummy Coke. All right. <laughs> nice. Okay, Nick, where, where can we find you on the socials? So I'm Nick from the Phoenix Press, and you can find me on Twitter at Project Access One. Also on YouTube, just search the Phoenix Press on YouTube. You'll find my find my channel. I uh, I do stuff twice a week. I got a pre-recorded one I drop on Monday called that Comics Watch Night of a Live Show that I have that I do every Wednesday at 6 p.m. EST. Which, by the way, you guys are all invited to come on. You know, such so a in that interview. Thank and you. Uh, and and yeah, I'm always looking to expand, so you can kind of expect more goodness from that channel. Awesome. Very cool. All right. Well, we're going to wrap it there, guys. Thanks so much again. And uh, make sure that you uh, back these guys. The, the links are in the description below. And for those of you who are watching on the replay, we appreciate you too, because, you know, all of your views uh, helps these guys make their dreams come true. Thanks, everyone. Awesome. Hail. Hail the chat. Hail.